Hey everyone, today we're at SHOT Show 2020 and I am with Brian Keeney of Occam Defense at the X-Tech booth. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Occam Defense. If you're not and you're into AKs, you really should be. This is a guy I've wanted to talk to for a while. I've been following kind of at a distance some of the stuff he's been doing and I genuinely think, I'm not just trying to blow smoke up his ass before we start talking, uh, some of the most exciting stuff I'm seeing in the AK industry as a whole. Um, I'm really liking the direction he's been going and I can only imagine things are going to get better but we actually have a couple things here um, to talk about but first I just want to ask you and kind of have you introduce yourself in Occam Defense. What is Occam Defense and how did you get started? Sure we didn't know we were making a nerd joke when we named the company but it comes from Occam's Razor which is all things being equal the simplest answer is the right one. Basically keep it simple stupid and cool old guy William of Occam in the 1500s and it's it's just about not making stuff complicated when it doesn't have to be. I uh, about a lifelong fascination with firearms. I didn't get into defensive firearms until I got attacked enough times and then had my kids around and realized that I couldn't run away. I highly recommend running away when you can, Sure. but sometimes people need a dirt nap. And uh, where I lived was quite dangerous. We had a lot of mentally ill and drug addicted people that were not acting rationally. And so I came to understand that defensive firearms are, at the end of the day, when you have a force imbalance, when you're not, you know, I'm 6'4", but when I got two little kids in my arms, sir, I may as well be five feet tall or, sure. or smaller. So when you have a force disparity like that, there's nothing like a defensive weapon to, to stop a threat. So I um, started looking at the easy button of defensive fire firearms. That whole martial art is complicated enough as it is without using something hard to learn. Right. And um, initially, I looked at the, like, Glock was easy. Okay, pistol, buy Glock 19. Simple. Problem, done. Yep. Okay. Yep. Rifle gets a lot more complicated, yep. especially I was in California. The laws there were awful. They're even worse now. But at the time, if you did an 80 percenter, um, you know, and made your own firearm, you could get around firearm registration, which I was keenly a fan of. Sure. Um, kind of at the same time that I realized I was responsible for my own security, I realized that the government didn't necessarily have my best interests at heart. Weird. Weird, yeah. right? Um, so privacy concerns came in at the same time Snowden was hitting. It was obvious that, yeah, just just what I said. Like, sure. uh, it's good to have things that are private. So um, went about making my own rifle, started to go down the AR-10 path and realized that it's very, I'm not saying it's a bad platform, but holy cow, not easy to make one run reliably. And what I wanted was a 16 inch barrel, 308 for the knockdown. I had looked at AKs, but they were so friggin' ugly that I could not stand the idea of touching one. Sure. I wanted to look like Captain America. Absolutely. But after having been humbled with the AR-10 and not getting one to run right, I'm like, okay, let's take a look at what it takes to make an AK. Went on YouTube and holy heck, there's a lot of ways to blow your face off on YouTube. Ended up uh, taking a Jim Fuller build class, same class as Brandon Herrera, which oh, is really fun. Nice. Um, this was his, his first gun too. Uh, the AK guy for you guys who might know him. And um, from there, built a, a rifle with Jim, figured out how to do it the right way, and then went back, figured out how to do 80% um, uh, builds. It was hard back then, now it's easy, both um, AK, sorry, Arms of America and Childers Guns sell an 80% AK lower that you drill three holes in and it's a gun. And it's a they're a very nice product. Highly recommend learning how to build AKs, uh, but do, do get some education. Um, from there, after I'd built an AK that ran, to be able to have a detachable magazine, you had to run featureless, which means no evil features. So you couldn't have a flash hider, you couldn't have a pistol grip, you couldn't have a folding or collapsible stock, any of that stuff. The way we got around the pistol grip thing was that we would put a web of kydex right here so that your thumb was wrapped around. Well, I'm not gonna do it. Well, I'm gonna do it up at the sky here. Running one-handed AK drills left-handed on a large gun is not easy, especially when there's a bunch of stuff hanging off the front end like flashlights and you know optics and all that stuff. Right. Plus, they were getting really hot. I was burning my hands. My first task was to get weight back off the front of the gun, and that was that first product that I think you're familiar with, the rear sight tower, yep. which just replaced the rear leaf on the standard AKM. 
with a pick rail. It's held for stout. It's as accurate as you can get on that platform just by virtue of being one piece of metal that's press fit to the barrel. Like, it ain't moving. Yeah. Had a backup rear notch on it. Um, I follow that school of thought that you should always have a backup and, and a QD mount to rip that optic off because the most common failure mode for optics is mud and fog. It's not that the battery goes dead. So it accomplished all those things, but I still had hot hands and I didn't have a nice place to mount my flashlight. So we started thinking about ways that we could bolt a handguard onto the rear sight block. And um, ended up starting, I just took a Magpul Zhukov, drilled and tapped one of our RSTs and clamped the Zhukov base. And all of a sudden we had a cool handguard and I thought, whoa, this is awesome. Can we make it cooler? And so we thought, hey, what about a radiator, or sorry, a muffler shield, like oh, in a car? Yeah. So we put a taco of metal in there with some like roof flashing, basically. Cut the heat in half again. So all of a sudden we knew we were on to something. Right. And so there's a whole long chain of progressions there, but what we ended up with is something that looks very AR-like. It's a free float and guard. The only place it clamps is back at the base of the barrel here, which is the coolest place on the whole barrel. So we're not grabbing heat. Sure. And then we've got this radiator inside or a heat shield that keeps the, the radiative heat from the barrel, which is like the warmth of the sun on a cold day. That's uh, infrared heat. It's, it's radiation. It's not, and it's not ionizing. It won't give you cancer. Um, but if you can block it with anything, then it radiates back to where it was going from. And so we've got this a chimney here. There's, there's cuts in the bottom of this taco that allows heat to convectively, which is you, convection is just gravitationally fed the way a chimney works, basically. With gravity, hot air rises, and you get this pulling effect. Does a really nice job at cooling off the barrel. So we tried to split the difference between operator comfort and barrel comfort. There's ways to make the operator's hands cooler, but at the expense of barrel life. And you, we want to be able to keep the barrel cool and keep the user's hand cool. So we tried to maximize those two effects. And we ended up with the Merc here, which is on Lee Armory's gun at the X-Tech Tactical Booth. Um, this is an 18-inch gun that they're just rolling out in six and a half Grendel, or was it Creedborn? Six and a half something. I think it's something, Grendel. It's Grendel. Yeah. It must be with, with that. So AK casing, but neck down to six and a half. 18-inch barrel. It is apparently badass. Um, you allow profanity on your channel? I don't hate it. And in worst case scenario, I can always bleep it. There you go. Uh, like a mustache with titties. <laughs> it's beautiful. Absolutely. There it is. Um, so one of the cool things about the Merc is that you can put whatever you want for iron sights on. And uh, we were using the CZ Evo sights. I don't want to be pointing, even though these guns are safe, I don't like pointing guns at people. But there's four apertures, a ghost ring in the back, and then an iron sight that's very AR-like up front. You can use whatever you want. These stopped being able to come into the country, so um, we're making our own. And uh, they look similar, they're different, but but they do a, a very similar function, these 50% co-witness with the Aimpoint Micro with the low mount. Oh, okay. So you get all the fun, you know, the, the, the height over bore is halfway between an AK and an AR. Oh. AR is typically 2.6, 2.7. Uh, AK is a little under two inches, and these sit at right about 2.4. Okay. So it's a nice happy medium. Um, the balance, when you use the Merc on the standard AK, makes the gun feel a lot more like an AR pulls the weight back because we got rid of all the steel that was sitting up here. Um, we realized that if we wanted to really get good adoption of this in the market, we had to build our own gun. And um, we started doing that. And they turn out to be really awesome. We love them. Uh, we haven't shipped a gun yet that's over two MOA. Uh, several of them have shot probably 25, 30% shoot sub MOA with Wolf Ammo, which we're pretty happy about. Yeah. Um, we gassed them down just a little bit, so they'll still cycle reliably, but they don't bang at you with the recoil. The majority of recoil felt with an AK is from the bolt carrier slamming back into your shoulder. Okay. Um, they come suppressor ready, as this one is here. This one's got a similar break to what we use. This is the dead air key mount system. So these come, our guns, this isn't one of ours again, but, but our 1775s are a 14 and a half pin and weld job. So they're, they're about this long. This is an 18 inch barrel. Um, they come suppressor ready, suppressor tuned, but they will also work without a can. 
and I'm assuming, probably goes without saying, but totally concentric threads so you don't have to worry about baffle strikes with your suppressor. We worked incredibly hard to get that right. It's not easy with 14.1. We're actually doing a video that's coming out soon with VSO on suppressor alignment. With a 14.1 muzzle, if you're off by one ten thousandth of an inch, if you have a tip of one ten thousandth, so 0 .0001 inches, you're going to notice it when you put a suppressor rod in. If you have two ten thousandths, you've eaten up most of the margin, and at half a thousandth, you're screwed. You're getting a baffle strike. So yeah, we test every gun. I've actually got a pile on my phone here. I'll try and share one with Ryan. Every gun we make um, has a photo with a suppressor alignment gauge and a test can to make sure that everything is perfectly good to go. That doesn't mean you shouldn't have a suppressor alignment. All adults should have suppressor alignment gauges sure. for their cans. Um, like. Just because you can bolt two things together doesn't mean that they're aligned. And so we heartily encourage, if you're going to spend a year of your life waiting for something, 200 on the stamp, a grand for the can, 70 bucks for a Geisley gauge is not a lot of money. So yeah, PSA on that. Well, and on their social media, he's good about posting pictures like that. So there's plenty of pictures of that alignment gauge. So you can see for yourself that they're actually testing that. Mm -hmm. um, with the 1775 rifles, uh, you have pistols and rifle configurations. Yep. Uh, with the Merc handguards, is it one length right now, or are you working on other lengths? There are two separate lengths. We're not shipping. People have been really patient with this. The pistol lengths, we don't have enough yet to ship out to customers mm -hmm. uh, for regular Merc. Uh, we're actually, this coming week, I think we're going to be able to start shipping pistol length ones. They work perfectly with the 10 and a half inch barrel. The pistol that we sell uses a crank length gas system. Okay. What that means is that the piston is two and a half inches. It's shorter than like on a Draco. What that lets us do is have a lot more barrel after the gas port, okay. which increases what's called the dwell time. That's the time during which the bullet is still in the chamber, but past the gas port, that's when gas is pushing out. What that lets us do is get a lot of time to cycle that action reliably. With crinks and some of these micro Dracos, you've really got to open up the gas port. And in the case of a crink, that's why they have that blast can on the front is a little pressure vessel to kick the piston back because on a crank, it's like the gas port's like half an inch from the muzzle face. Yeah. Also, that has some something to do with accuracy. The last two inches or so of the barrel uh, makes the biggest difference in accuracy. So if we're not doing anything like cutting holes in barrels during that last couple inches, but they fly better. And we have seen no difference in accuracy between the pistols and rifles. Really? Yeah, they're shooting, like I said, Every gun we've shipped has been sub two MOA. Pistols yeah. are no different. Well, and so, you know, we kind of brief went pretty quick over the history of Auckland Defense, and I feel like, no offense, you're kind of underselling how much you've done. Okay. Uh, I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, his rifles are awesome, but a lot of that comes from, you know, you had, you came into AKs and self defense fairly recently, mm -hmm. from what you've said, and. Um, Coming into the AK market with a fresh set of eyes, with a very scientific mind mm -hmm. like you have, he's been able, and I know we can't go super into some of the things you've done to improve the manufacturing process mm -hmm. to make AKs truer and better and more accurate, but he's come up with ways of pressing in barrels that's better, fitting bolt carriers, like he just posted a video yep. talking about. Yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah. That's a good place to start. But yeah. I mean, little things that he's done, he's just looked at it with a fresh set of eyes. and. You know, ever since 1947, people have been making AKs more or less the same way. But there is room for improvement. The whole yet rifle is fine. That's true to a point, but there's room for improvement that he's been able to find to, again, make several sub MOA guns with wolf ammo. And it's not a fluke when you're able to do that consistently. Yeah, right, right. Um, yeah, my background is, is in physics. That's a bit like saying you're a doctor. You could look up people's buttholes or deliver babies. You don't know what that means, right? Right. So um, I went to college thinking that I was going to make the world's best surfboard, and I wanted to mimic uh, the way dolphins swim through water and surf under waves. Fell in love with physics along the way. I showed up at the ocean yeah. oceanography department, and they told me, get the hell over to physics and come back to us in several years right. after you've figured some things out. Right. Fell in love with physics. I, it's what I had been passionate about all along. I just didn't know that that's what it was called, right. which sounds weird, but go figure. No, yeah. Um, and uh, 
ended up getting a job doing particle physics stuff, like how, like radiation, measuring radiation basically, and built a bunch of telescopes, and um, eventually went on to design X-ray sources, a lot of measurement applications. So measuring, making a, a yardstick for things that are very hard to measure. When you do that, you bump up against the boundaries of what can be done, and sure. you end up having to steal from different industries. And there's this great Picasso line, that good artists borrow, great artists steal. And um, I love doing that. And I looked at the AK and then looked at the AR. Nobody says, and yet, A2 carry handle is fine, right? Right. right. And I understand this is not to disparage the wood AK. It has a place, and they freaking work. And um, you can run them over with trucks. You know, you can use them as a ladder. Like, you'll see all the all over the place, which terrifies me in the <laughs> Middle East. Dudes will use them as, like, grappling hooks and stuff and pull each other up buildings with them. Yep. They're really great. That said, um, we don't have A2 carry handles anymore. Sure. There's a reason for that. Right. You know, Red Dot Optics came along. We didn't have aluminum extrusion 70 years ago or 80 years ago. We do now. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, what I like doing is seeing a, a done solution from somewhere else and then pulling it in and seeing if I can make it work for what we're doing. For sure. instance, this will freak a lot of folks out, but airplanes are held together with double stick tape now. I know that sounds weird, but I like airplanes and I like that they sure. hold together. Yeah. And I got really interested in what double stick tapes could do. Started machining with them, like we literally hold down aluminum and we'll cut the aluminum on a mill, then squirt alcohol underneath the part and use a little pry bar and the adhesive pops and then we can take this paper thin part off, no sweat. So, I started looking around when we were building this thing for aerospace grade adhesives that we could use to secure the heat shield. The reason is that if we were to use rivets or fasteners, this metal is so thin that as it vibrates, it work hardens and then it cracks around the fastener. So believe it or not, this heat shield's held in with 3M, a very particular type of 3M aerospace double stick. And you would not believe how hard it is to get off. So um, that's an example of stealing from another area sure. and doing something really cool and the weight benefits are great. Oddly, when it gets hot, it cements harder. It, get, it becomes more durable. Huh. So it's not like the 3M that you can get at the hardware store. This right. is, this this is, is some weird room. stuff, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, again, he, he does a good job of posting videos online, like you said, how to do the conversions if you wanted to put a Merc handguard on your own rifle. Um, but also some of those little things that he does to make stuff better. He's constantly posting on Facebook. You do Instagram Live a lot. Mm -hmm. And he's really good about answering questions. That was what really made me, uh, you know, because again, I'd seen him around on other people's channels before. But seeing the way he was able to talk, how intelligently he was able to talk about the AK made it very clear to me that this is something he's seriously passionate about. And again, seeing the results of a lot of that just made me know that I needed to communicate what this guy's doing to anyone who's watching this video um, because I think it's really awesome what he's doing. And again, I'm not trying to just blow smoke up his ass. I, I genuinely believe that. Um, the five free rifles that we shipped, you had nothing well, to do with no, that. Well, no, yes, we yeah. weren't supposed to talk about that. Um, but on that, uh, there are rifle like you, like you mentioned, Curtis at VSO Gun Channel. Yep. He's got one in and he's testing out. So I'm going to have links to that as well because you know, we can talk about it all day long, but when you actually see someone using it, it'll probably make a little bit more sense and we can actually see how it performs by someone who's going to run it hard. Um, that's always a good thing also. Yep. And yeah, the, while there are a bunch of things that we can't talk about with our processes because we're a very small shop, I know some people think that we're like a 50 person company or something. We're four dudes in a shop yeah. and we work really, really hard. Um, but we do need to maintain some kind of a competitive advantage. We right. try to share little bits of what we do, but the real core that lets us be a small shop that can compete, we got to keep safe. That said, I did want to let one out that was a really cool innovation from my perspective, and that's a robot that we built, and we put the prototype up on Instagram the other day, and what it does is it pre-breaks in the bolt before we set final headspace, we match the trunnion to the bolt. And headspace growth in AKs is a really big issue, especially depending on where they come from, the metallurgy. We use really good parts, but we were noticing um, early on 
we would headspace them nice and tight and they would grow two or three thou within 100 rounds or so. Now two or three thou doesn't sound like a lot, but you got 10 thou in the usable life. And it, it, it would break in rapidly and then plateau Love because we were, we were smushing the little, the high points we were smushing down. But I wanted to get that back and I wanted the guns to run as smoothly as possible. And there's another issue where sometimes the lugs on the left and right lugs are, are sometimes not flat, sometimes they're tipped. So you're putting most of the force onto one lug. Right. That sucks. And, yeah. and I've got lots of examples of commie guns that are horribly matched. So this is not like an American gun problem. This is an AK problem. We ended up coming up with a method. I don't share all of how we do it, um, but we have a robot that'll put 750 strokes through the gun with lapping grit that matches the trunnion to the bolt or, and the bolt to the trunnion. When you do that, um, the headspace growth out of the factory and through final test is almost non-existent. So we've minimized force, minimized stress. Well, we haven't minimized the force. The force is the force, but sure. we've minimized pressure, which is force per, per square area. Um, what that translates to is smoother action, better cycling, longer life, all the, all the things we like without any downside because we're not actually putting rounds. When we put 750 cycles or 1,000 cycles on one of these guns, we're not wearing out the barrel. Right. There's no shots being fired. We're just in the lab cycling it. So we get to wear in all of these surfaces. You know, you don't get the crunk. Well, this gun is quite nice. I don't mean to disparage Lee. On a, on a typical AK, they'll hang up. And this one's brand new, so it's still hanging up a little bit on the hammer there. That breaks in after a couple hundred rounds. But what if you could just get one out of the box that way? That's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, the primary benefit, as I say, is this headspace issue that that is, uh, yeah, from our pers perspective, just solved. Whereas before, the way they do that in Russia is they're, they literally have little old ladies with a file and they put the bolt in a candle uh -huh. to get the carbon on it. Oh. And then they'll cycle it in, pull it out, look at the bright spot, file off the bright spot. And that's the traditional method of tuning. We don't have babushkas here. Right, I was gonna say. But we can make robots. Right. And so that I think is a really good example of what we're about, yeah. is trying to use modern technology to keep what is wonderful about the AK. Like, I consider this the holy trinity here, right? The trunnion, the bolt, the bolt carrier. Don't mess with that. Yeah. Don't mess with the receiver. That stuff's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the other stuff and how they're made, we we don't manufacture like we did in the 40s. Right. Clearly. Yeah. Well, and again, a lot of this stuff is going to be available individually. I don't know if we mentioned it, but like you've got a rear trunnion now for mm -hmm. like pistols that has the 1913 rail integral to it. Um, so you can just retro if you will have an AK pistol, you want to put a folding brace on. Now you have an option that you can add to yours, pop your old training out, put this one in, and now you've got a 1913 route mount built into it. Uh, the Merc hand guards, the optics, that rear sight tower, if you wanted to just do that. A lot of this stuff he's selling individually, or if you want the full kit and caboodle, the 1775 rifles um, are, are, again, the results speak for themselves. Uh, and one other thing I want to touch on is it never ceases to amaze me how many people in the industry who work making guns or designing guns aren't shooters. They don't train. They don't use the guns in practice. And a lot of that shows in the design. Uh, you've taken quite a, yeah, a good amount of training. Yeah, uh, I started in 2014 and I've probably taken, oh, I don't know, at least 10 or 12 weeks minimum of, of training around the country with a bunch of really great folks who have shown me a lot of what I don't know, sure. and uh, so it's a really it's it's a path that'll it's a journey, not a destination. I love sure. training, um, love taking them to classes where we can break stuff and sure. see it, see where it. That's that's the lab for all these is right. that I take them to tactical response to Sonny Pazikas' stuff to Travis Haley, and we break them. Yeah. And like I took the prototype for the 1775 to Travis Haley, and one of his classes, and he really liked it. But he's like, bolt carriers are a little sluggish. And the dude's shooting like, you know, 10 rounds a second or some ridiculous thing. Right. And I can't tell that the bolt carrier's slow. Right. Um, but he's like, yeah, let's throw the can on it. And that cans give a little back pressure and gas them harder. Yeah. And at that time I was gassing at 2.7 millimeter. We popped the can on, he's like, oh, that's perfect. Just add a little more. And so we went up a pinch from there and that's been our recipe ever since. 
So there's a lot of great instructors that have their fingers all in this thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, going tactical response, it's a giant sand pit. And uh, most guns don't survive a week of contractor training there. And, and my guns have been through that. And that's when I started to get real confidence about, about the goodness of them. Yeah. I mean, I hear a lot of people whenever I do a review, well, I have X rifle and it's never failed. If you, if you genuinely have a gun that's never had an issue, you're not training hard enough. The sand pit, I've never been to tech response, but I've talked to a lot of people who have, and I've seen a lot of the footage from there. That that will make a rifle fail. If your rifle's gonna fail, it's gonna fail there. And so, again, but having someone that's training with the products and getting input from people who know the products as well. Sonny Fizikas knows a thing or two about AKs. Travis Haley knows a thing or two about AKs. Tech response guys know a thing or two about AKs. Mm -hmm. Again, the results speak for themselves when you get all of that together with someone who cares about what they're doing and is totally invested in what they're doing. You get a result like the 1775 rifle and the individual components that put that thing together. Um, I, I don't know, again, mm -hmm. results speak for themselves. At that yeah, point. no, and this is a mission for us. I mean, the, the prior industries that I were, was in were far more lucrative, but I didn't like the customers and it wasn't any fun. Sure. And uh, getting to know who is building my, or who is using my guns, it's a giant deal for me. I sure. think when the, when the San Antonio massacre happened, for whatever reason, I had this experience of what it would be like if that guy used one of my guns, and I damn near threw up. And I had a moment where I was like, is this really what I want to be doing? And then I thought back to who I know, I know you guys. And... The gun culture is amazing, yeah. and do I want good people with guns right. to give dirt naps to assholes like that? Exactly. Heck yeah. yeah! And so that's our mission: is to give good people guns to keep their families and communities safe, and uh, we care a lot about that. Awesome. Now, so we've we've talked about what you've been working up to and what where we're at now. Any signs of where things are headed? Stuff you're working on in the future you can talk about at all? Um, I think that if you I'm gonna speak a little cryptically, but I'll, it'll it'll be a fun puzzle. Sure. Um, there are things about the AK. We I believe that we've taken a bunch of what I would consider outdated designs out of the gun. There are a few remaining um, that do not have to do with the bolt, bolt carrier, and trunnion. Okay. And uh, we're going after them. Okay. Yeah. And that and just building capacity. It's it is a really monumental challenge to do manufacturing in America with Americans working at living wages. Right. And so we're investing a great deal in fixturing and updating our production to you know continue to, to fixture and do automated processes that have very high quality but allow us to keep a low head count sure. and, and to pay our people and all that. So there's a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes that's going to happen that'll let us be a more robust, healthy company. Awesome. So like I said, VSO Gun Channel already has one in for testing. I know he's already done a little bit of filming with it, talking about like uh, setting the tension, or I believe, didn't he do, I think he did a video. I, he there. did the trigger pull and initial accuracy okay. so far. That. Okay. Um, so again, there's already data out there, videos being made about that. Uh, but if people want to look to the source for information or find out more about the line of rifles, lead times and all that, where can they find that information? Uh, Instagram is where I post almost all of our content. Okay. I'm the admin on there. So if you have questions, please reach out to me, um, put them in comments or direct messages. Um, I try to be very accessible. Um, yeah, that's the best way. We simul post to Facebook, but I don't okay. typically check back there. There's some stuff on YouTube, our website as well has some installation videos, IP stuff. If you're curious about patents, we got all those up there. Um, that kind of thing, yeah. Cool. Well, I'll have either links below or on the screen, depending on what YouTube decides is okay uh, that day of the week. Um, but on places like Full30 or Facebook, I'll have all the links there. Definitely check it out, it's worth doing. And are you still doing live streams pretty regularly on Instagram? Um, try, we're trying to get back into them. Okay. It's been crazy busy, but yes, um, people like the live streams yeah. and we'll try and do more of that. Cool. Yep. So if you guys can get in on those, ask questions in real time, get answers in real time. Um, it's again, just a really good source of information. And I'm really excited to see where Occam Defense goes in the next coming years. Cause seeing how far you've come in what, three, four years that you've been doing it. Um, I can Thank only you. imagine it's going to get better. Thank so, you. Uh, well, and, and I'd like to say, you know, for those people that 
are not into what we do, you know, that like the standard wood AK, that's totally cool. Uh, I would ask you to follow our our Instagram just for the stuff that we put out about the Liberty Movement, that sure. sort of thing. Yeah. If you own a gun and you're pro 2A, we're on the same team. Yeah, so, absolutely. you know, we're not right for everybody, but we like to be friends with everybody. So, yeah. you know. Well, cool, Brian, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. We're gonna be doing a lot more filming here at SHOT Show 2020, so definitely stay tuned for that. But as always, I hope you got something out of this video, and I really appreciate you watching. Thanks, guys.